And now for our dinosaur of the day over Raptor, which was requested from the user Triassic321 on YouTube, so thank you. And our first request via YouTube. So the name over Raptor means egg taker, egg Caesar, egg thief, anything to do with taking eggs, really. George Olson discovered the bones in Henry Fairfield Osborne described over Raptor in 1924. It was a small theropod that lived in Mongolia in the Cretaceous. The first fossils were found on top of what were thought to be protoceratops eggs. The holotype is a partial skeleton with a crushed skull which was found near a nest of 15 eggs. Osborne, interestingly at the time, also said the name over Raptor, quote, may entirely mislead us as to its feeding habits and belie its character, end quote, and he turned out to be right. The type species is Ovaraptor philoceratops, and the name philoceratops means lover of ceratopsians, and this is because they thought that Ovaraptor liked to eat protoceratops. Poor Ovaraptor, <laughs> getting a bad rap. It might have eaten protoceratops. There were a lot of other protoceratops found near where Ovaraptor was found. They thought also that the protoceratops was the one to crush the Ovaraptor skull. This still could have happened. Maybe a protoceratops stumbled upon the oviraptor in its nest, and then the oviraptor died protecting the nest, the eggs. In the 1990s, scientists found nesting oviraptorids, such as Sidipati, which means the eggs found near oviraptor were probably oviraptor eggs, and oviraptor was probably brooding. In 1994, similar-looking eggs to the eggs found by oviraptor had oviraptor-like embryos, and one oviraptorid nest had two embryo-sized velociraptor bones, and this may be an example of brood parasitism. Some modern birds do this, such as the old world cuckoo, where they lay eggs in other species' nests so that the other species end up taking care of the eggs, so it's possible that velociraptor did that too. It's Sneaky. Yeah, it is. Clever girl. <laughs> anyway, it's unclear exactly what oviraptor ate. Possibly they still ate eggs. Though lizard remains were found in the stomach cavity of the only known oviraptor skeleton, so it was at least partially carnivorous, which is why maybe it did eat some protoceratops. Or yeah, if they were young enough, I guess. Yeah, or scavenged or something. So oviraptor may have been omnivorous. It had a toothless beak. It had spikes on the roof of its mouth instead of teeth. And Osborne thought oviraptor had a crushing jaw, that its toothless beak was an egg-piercing tool. In 1977, Barswold said the beak may have been strong enough to break clam shells. Wow. And clam and mollusk fossils were common in the same area as Ovaraptor. Ovaraptor is the type genus of Ovaraptoridae, a family that Barswold named in 1976. Osborne originally classified Ovaraptor as an ornithomimid, probably because it was so bird-like. And other Ovaraptorids include Sidipati, Conchoraptor, and Khan. These are feathered theropods that lived in Central Asia and were very bird-like. Creostenotes is also considered to be a close relative of Ovaraptor. So Ovaraptor, despite having raptor in the name, is not a dromaeosaur. Sidipati and Ovaraptor are very similar, and knowing what Sidipati looked like has helped with Ovaraptor reconstructions. Scientists thought that Ovaraptor had a crest like a cassowary on its head, but now they think that this distinctive crest was on City Potty instead, and Ovaraptor probably had a crest, but it's not clear the size or shape because the only skull found of Ovaraptor was crushed. That's a pretty good comparison, though, comparing it to a cassowary mm -hmm. in size and shape and stuff. Definitely. In 1976, Barsbold referred six other specimens to Ovaraptor, but then later they were reclassified as Conchoraptor. There's also a large specimen with a distinct crest that was classified as Ovaraptor in 1981, but on closer inspection has been tentatively reclassified as City Potty. And this is actually the specimen where they based the idea of having a crest like a cassowary. So the crest may have been large and may have been U-shaped, and it may have been for display. There's skin impressions from other Ovaraptorosaurs, like Cauditerix and Protarchaeopteryx, that show that there were feathers on the body, wings, and tail, so Ovaraptor probably also had feathers. And Ovaraptor probably used its arms to help insulate eggs while brooding. It was very bird-like, its rib cage was very bird-like and rigid, and it had a parrot-like head. It was about six and a half feet or two meters long, weighed about 55 to 76 pounds or 25 to 35 kilograms, and it was bipedal with long legs, so it could probably move fast, like an ostrich. Ostriches can run up to 43 miles per hour, 70 kilometers per hour. Although I don't think Ovaraptor was quite that fast. It had an S-shaped neck, long tail, strong arms, curved claws on the hands and feet, and each of those had three digits. The claws were about three inches or eight centimeters long, and Oof. 
they had long, grasping fingers. Oviraptor probably cared for its young, and it had muscular, flexible tails. Scott Persons and a team found that Oviraptor and its kind could hold their tails up at sharp, upward angles, so it's possible that male Oviraptors displayed tail feathers to attract mates, like a peacock. Hmm. They may have even done a mating dance. Scott and his team published about the tails in a study in 2015 called A Possible Instance of Sexual Dimorphism in the Tails of Two Oviraptorosaur Dinosaurs. And we talked about this study on our podcast. It was about two Oviraptorids nicknamed Romeo and Juliet who died next to each other. A large sand dune fell on top of them. They were about the same size and age, but Romeo had longer, more complex tail bones, like a peacock. And they're buried side by side for 75 million years. If you'd like, you can see Oviraptor in Ark Survival Evolved, and in that game, Oviraptor steals eggs for itself or its owner, and it gives a mating speed boost to all nearby allied dinosaurs. So <laughs> I guess it may never totally shed that first impression. Yeah, I gotta start playing that game. There's so much cool stuff going on there. Yeah. So Oviraptoroids lived in the Cretaceous in Mongolia, North America, and they used to be considered ornithomimids, but now they're part of Manoraptora. They're generally small with short skulls, toothless jaws, and crests on the skull, and they had feathers. And compared to other Manoraptorans, they have short tails. 